Okay, I see the red light, so here we go. Um, this is Elijah Martinez, I'm Bob Land. We work for SAP in our area's SAP Cloud Platform, which we'll talk a little about. We're gonna be discussing uh, monetizing microservices and APIs and Cloud Foundry in some order. So, uh, first of all, a few words about what SAP Cloud Platform is. Um, SAP has a lot of stuff that enterprises use, the SAP HANA database, uh, S4 HANA uh, uh, software, the, uh, um, their uh, applications like Concur, Ariba. Typically, all these things out of the box meet a lot of the needs of an enterprise, but they need extra. They need extra functionality. And rather than do that one at a time, one enterprise at a time, SAP has put together um, a platform as a service, which includes collaboration, integration, Internet of Things, machine learning, and as you see, uh, Cloud Foundry. These are the things, the building blocks that are used for um, customizing the experience of the enterprise software. And in particular, uh, microservices. Uh, by using API proxies, it's possible, and we'll see this, to look at all of the, um, the assets, the software assets, as potential sources of microservices, which can then be used in the cloud. And so we'll talk a little about, and, and then of course we can leverage things like uh, support for browsers and mobile devices. So first of all, that explanation doesn't satisfy my daughter, she's in sixth grade, so this is what I tell her. SAP Cloud Platform is like a big Minecraft inventory of really cool things, and they let IT organizations create really great enterprise software while they are scrambling in survival mode. And so you can think of the security as like diamond armor, and then the web IDE is like a crafting table, and uh, HTML and Java, those are your swords, your picks, we have Node.js, and so on. You can imagine who are the skeletons firing arrows and the, uh, the cave spiders. So, Next slide here. So really this is what we see. We can use Cloud Foundry for scaling, we can use it for failover, we can use it for load balancing, and this makes SOA, which used to be a challenge, a lot easier. If you're trying to get a job done and at the same time have reusable code, you have a lot of problems. The code is not, those are two things that are in tension. Uh, and what can happen is scaling can be a problem, or you may have um, technical debt. So this is really a, a terrific thing for doing so. It gives it another chance. Let's go on again. So we're gonna talk about microservices derived from the back end software, how we can monetize it. There's a story about that, and a little bit about how we track API usage. So getting into what we mean by that. Microservices from the back end. So Cloud Foundry is great if you're doing greenfield cloud native development, but if you've got legacy software, you can be excited about that because you can develop Microsoft services based on the capabilities you already have in backend software, running in data centers, and you can leverage it in the cloud. Next slide, please. So API management is very important for this. This is mining, you know, the Minecraft thing, uh, valuable focused functionality from on-premise software. And so, we consume those APIs with cloud-native software. And there's no required refactoring, replatforming, or any changes in the back-end code. So next, end of the security remains the same. So we're gonna see a story about how this happens in one organization. So let's go next. So this is the story, and next. And it's about a closeout sale. So these uh, cartoons are actually a, a product uh, called Scenes that SAP uses for uh, user-centered design. It allows us to uh, look at scenarios based on the individuals who are gonna be using the software and ask ourselves how they cope today, how will they cope with our software development, and we can focus on optimizing functionality. So here we've got a warehouse manager, Leo, an IT manager, Walt, and installation tech, Zoe, next. So. Zoe and Leo are setting up for a week of installing hardware with customers, and suddenly, looking at route maps, Zoe sees that her phone gets a device use deprecated, and 
Leo gets the same thing. I don't know if any of you have ever had that. I've actually had that happen to me, and I won't say the brand of device, but as a result, I had to go through um, some talks with IT, so next. And of course, in IT, what you get is a train of messages from lots and lots of people with problems. Now, Walt is thinking about this logically. He says, all of these people bought their devices online from the company store. They should be able to go online and exchange those devices. The problem is, the store isn't built to do that. And touching that kind of monolithic app can be dangerous. If you don't break it, you may take its design in a direction that you later regret. And so what he really wants is just to be able to layer something on top of what already exists. Next slide. So this, um, I'll just say, this is the company store app. You can have this your very self. Um, we have these, um, you, you can get a, uh, a trial account in uh, SAP Cloud Platform for free just registering online, and among the sample apps is, in fact, a, a web shop like this. Next. So, uh, and here, there's the, the phone that we're saying is, uh, is going to be recalled. So what he wants to do is for the employee who owns one of those to see a pop-up that says, this is deprecated, exchange it, and run, do the right thing. So. Um, and then just send an email saying this has all been handled. So let's say he does that. How did he do that? Okay, now, so, well, he took a little too fast. Okay, so instead of disappearing the phone from the list because it's deprecated, next, he wants to insert API management in between the APIs that were exposed on the back end and that were consumed in the on the web. And the API management layer makes these changes and layers them on top of the interface that already existed. So let's see how he does that next. Okay, so that's what he wants. He wants to come up showing deprecated, a single button that says exchange, and then the JavaScript does the rest. On. So the steps. Number one, use this SAP Cloud Platform API management, create API proxies for the OData services, and then protect them with keys and policies then something else, and eventually you hope to make money. Next. So he goes to API management. This is one of the many services we saw for uh, SAP Cloud Platform. And um, it has two flavors. There's a portal for people who are building APIs, and another portal for people who are consuming APIs in applications. So first, we have to build the API. So here he sees statistics on what APIs has been, have been built already in the system and how much they're being used and who the big users are. Now, what he can do now is go to the company store, browse it in Chrome, and as we all do, just click on developer tools. And now he can look and find where is that thing getting its backend data about these devices. He copies the URL, now goes back to the home page and says create API. Pastes the URL and now creates a base path in the API. He says, he clicks once, and now he's got a basic API proxy. He's come in between the back end and the internet. So at this point, when he clicks save and deploy, he's got a live proxy. Does he really? He can copy that next and paste it into Chrome and he sees the backend data, and that's bad. So what he realizes is maybe that was a little too fast, and he goes on to add security. So you go to policies now, goes to policies, and he can now add as many policies as he wants on the request and response paths of that API. A good one to add at this point is um, check for an API key and see that you have a good API key. So he puts that in right away. Now, Let's see what happens. Ah, okay, you can no longer get to your precious backend data from Chrome because it's looking for a valid API key. Now, few steps. APIs, back a little, okay, thanks. Okay, um, okay yeah, you have to create a product, so he's clicking on product. Um, a product is a, way, a logical collection of APIs that 
go together for developers. Might be as little as one API, but typically uh, there may be several ones. For example, a security uh, product might have several kinds of protection for different kinds of code injection. Moving on. Okay, so he's creating a product, named product, and moving on. Uh, and he selects just the API that he just built, saying that's what's in the product. Okay, and the product is now published, which means that he can work on it in the developer portal. So at this point, he puts on his developer hat and opens the developer portal. He sees the product there. He can click on that. And typically, there would be information. He's built the thing, so he knows what it does. But this would have a lot of information about what this API does and any cautions about using it. He subscribes in the name of his application. OK, moving on. And so that's the company store UI, which also is now going to have uh, additional logic and widgets for his deprecated items announcement and the exchange button. So now, the company store UI is a registered API application. And so if he clicks on that, he finds its very own unique API key. That is going to give him access to the API. So we move on. And there's a, um, in uh, SAP Cloud Platform, you have a client that you can use for testing these things. Or you could use Postman, same thing. And, uh, Sure enough, if he adds the API key to his request, he can actually get at the back end data. And this time, it's been done securely with an API key. So moving on. So he's gotten at the back end data. He has managed to add a policy that makes it safe to expose. And now he can use hooks, those hooks, uh, from the company store UI so that he can exchange deprecated devices. So he basically just has to make changes to the UI. The back end remains exactly the same as it ever was. And so he gets it. And now his employees are able to exchange their deprecated phones. Is he done? Well, not quite. Uh, Leo, it turns out, is now getting flooded with thousands of phones which the vendor will not take back. And his idea for a solution is, could he please have an external facing website so that wholesalers can bid on these things and he can uh, clear his stock? He needs to zero his inventory. They discuss it. And the company is able to negotiate to have a 24-hour closeout online auction. But a 24-hour closeout of bidding war does not sound good to Waltz, because that web traffic would not be a good thing for his dedicated servers to experience. The answer is to deploy the auction site on Cloud Foundry. Moving on. So he doesn't create the auction site. What he does is he goes back to the API portal, and he creates permissions on a product that can be exposed to external users. And then those users log in to the dev portal. And with their role, they only see a limited number of products. So using that reduced product, which doesn't expose anything uh, that, that is sensitive, uh, a contractor is able to create an auction site using another SAP Cloud Platform uh, feature, uh, the portal service. And the portal service is a great way to create things, uh, websites that have uniform branding and that are tightly integrated with the rest of SAP Cloud Platform. So the site has been created for him. He now goes into, so Walt now can access his Cloud Foundry space in SAP Cloud Platform. And he can create a container for his, uh, um, for his closeout sales and then upload it from the uh, MTAR file, which represents the work that the, uh, uh, that the contractor did. And at that point, he sees that he now has an instance of his um, closeout site. And it's running. Uh, he can look at details of it. And then next, he can vary the, the quota and memory next. And he can, those two buttons up there um, allow him to 
add or subtract instances. And next, and so by monitoring exactly what's going on, he can uh, massage the ability of the auction site to handle traffic. So Leo is able to clear his shelves, and the deprecated inventory is eared out. Now, Walt is getting emails from some of the bidders who would like to have opportunities to buy other excess inventory. And they would like to subscribe to these APIs as a service. Well, Walt is able to recognize that he was able to solve his immediate problem. Leo wants to use the same method to liquidate further inventory issues. So he's now considering selling access to a limited API that he now has a good idea of what it would be uh, to liquidators and third-party developers and charge them based on usage. Next. So tracking usage is the key to monetization here. And that's analytics. So if you see here the API platform and developer services we talked about, but the analytics is the other part of this. So you can look at the long and short term trends and analyze, and of course, because every application has a unique um, token, uh, you're able to see, uh, a key, you're able to see who's using what. Now, you probably also noticed we had this thing called API Business Hub, which was to the left when he went to API management. Now what that is, is uh, like the developer portal, but it's for the things that came out of the box with SAP Cloud Platform. Uh, you're able to get at those features through APIs. And so you can explore that and um, use that a, 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 as a way of, of uh, generating new functionality. So next. Um, so yeah, the, uh, yeah, this is a, a good example of some of the things on the side there. The uh, S4 HANA finance or the uh, uh, success factors. Uh, these are all th the translation hub. These are all things that can be accessed as APIs and integrated in other software. This translation hub is something like 39 languages. Um, these are some resources, and the most important thing is uh, that if you do decide to uh, just sign up for free uh, for a, your very own um, trial landscape, um, you can play with these things, and uh, it's better than a demo. Next. Thank you very much. <laughs> I'm never a mic fan. Um, so I, I did just want to summarize a little bit about what we had heard in this nice uh, demo presentation. Um, you know, the idea here is that you can, as a developer, come in and work on top of the APIs that exist already to monetize and uh, basically revamp existing access and assets. Uh, you can do that either as a partner. So Bob mentioned, for example, you can have a partner build the shell structure, which can be reutilized on top of the APIs that exist already. You can do this as a customer, so you can actually incentivize developers to direct traffic. So for example, the auction site, um, you can basically open up those APIs to the developers and say, for every you know, person you direct over to my auction site, I will give you some small uh, amount of payment from your application, and I will track that again, as Bob was talking about, through your API key, which you're able to get. And you're also able to, as a developer, create your own APIs on top of the microservices in Cloud Foundry and charge other users to use the service that you are creating in, again, like this mashup uh, style concept where, for example, you have an existing legacy system, you've built an extension on top of that from your own microservice that you've created, and by them consuming what you've created, uh, you're able to then charge them some uh, cost to use. And that's actually one of the very nice things about the API Business Hub that Bob was just introducing, um, is that many developers are not necessarily enterprise developers. You may not know about enterprise services, software, all this stuff. It's something you don't really care about. You've never worked with it before. But with the APIs, you don't need to know all that stuff, right? You just need to know what the forms of the data that's going to be returned. You need to know sort of what people are going to be looking for, and then build some kind of extension or application on top of that. So we've actually already seen 
uh, success factors, which is our HR uh, solution. We've seen developers come into the business hub, discover the forms and data that's returned. We actually have sandbox data that you can play with live um, in the API business hub for free. Um, and just from discovering and learning what those uh, data formats look like, build an application uh, that actually visualizes and makes a nice front end on top of that data, which can then be sold to customers um, in order to actually you know, be used in their live production instances. And these are people who don't necessarily know this enterprise data already. So it's a really nice uh, way to actually start to develop, monetize, and make money on top of data without having to be like a true enterprise uh, level person. So I just wanted to kind of summarize uh, all the things that you heard here, uh, as well as bring a little bit of new stuff into it. Uh, now, of course, monetization doesn't have to just be on the API management layer level. We like it because it makes it much more easy and flexible. Um, there was an earlier talk by uh, Pankaj about actually monetizing uh, microservices on the Cloud Foundry layer, uh, and you can really do monetization wherever you want, um, but we think that API is one of the easiest ways to actually go ahead and uh, be very agile in terms of getting processes started and monetizing them. So I think with that, maybe we can open it up for questions. Are there any questions about any of the things that you saw here? I know this is a lot of information to be presented with at once. If not, I'm not seeing a lot of hands up. Um, oh, okay. Are there other uh, security policies that can be applied to generate or in addition to injection? There are a number. Well, uh, actually, you can include them right now. Uh, so, but there are, is a, mm -hmm. a large thing that gets So there are definitely quite a few uh, security policies. Um, so authentication, of course, doesn't have to just be done with an API key. Um, you can do it with an OAuth uh, token. You can do it with SAML, so uh, calling out to an IDP for people to really make these applications enterprise ready. Um, and then there's real uh, access runtime level uh, authentication. So you can do things like, uh, uh, like you're saying, injection protection. Um, one of the ones that I just saw very recently was uh, for JSON inspection. You can actually limit the number of uh, recursive layers that can be uh, added to a particular thing, so you can't just overload a backend with some ridiculous number of things. Um, you can do traffic uh, quota, you can do spike arrest, you can do um, uh, XML bomb protection, things like that. So there are actually quite a number of uh, pre-made security policies specifically with that kind of stuff in mind. Um, and I don't know if anyone's familiar with OWASP. Um, so this is kind of a broader security thing, so we've really tried to address a lot of the top um, threats that they have brought up in terms of being a ready-made policy. And then as Bob mentioned, uh, you can actually create or script your own um, enhanced security protections if there's something that's not out of the box that you really need. So it's a, it's a pretty robust tool um, for actually really protecting and making sure that APIs are not just open willy-nilly. Um, and that's <clears throat> really one of the powers of that is that Everybody loves APIs. I mean, and it really makes the developer uh, experience much better. But the idea of having just open APIs is not always the best, especially in an enterprise scenario. So, uh, you know, if you have any kind of need for protection of backend, uh, having that managed API with the security, the authentication, uh, transformations, things like that, it really adds a lot of value to those APIs. So, thank you for that question. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. So uh, our developer portal, well, so the actual underlying structure of the API management is all built um, as an API-first technology, so you can access all of the information via API calls. The actual just front end is built on uh, what we call Fiori. This is kind of our Fiori experience, um, but it can be modified. So for example, Bob talked about the cloud portal. Um, you can actually build a cloud portal front end to the developer portal. You and you don't have to use our stuff out of the box either. So you can use even just like a CMS or a, just a plain web page um, as long as you're able to pull in those API calls. Um, so it really is whatever you want. So we provide something for you out of the box. 
We provide templates for making easily uh, consumed portal sites, and then if you want to go your own way, then you have all those API calls available as well. Um, yeah. Perfect. Anything else? I know every time I start to say, like, ah, there's no more questions, someone has one, so I'll really, I'll wait this time. Any other questions? Okay. Now I'm calling it. <laughs> and if you do have other questions that come to mind, uh, we do have an expert booth uh, available in the show hall. Um, Bob and myself will be participating, as well as a number of other experts in the cloud platform uh, product management and true technical development uh, experience level. So please feel free to come by and ask us any questions you like. And uh, thank you for attending. <laughs>